joy, grit, and compassion. Hi out there, this is Heather Vickery, and you've tuned into the Brave Files podcast. And guess what, y'all? Today is my actual birthday. I am very proud to be turning 47 today. And while sometimes getting older is a little bit of a bitch, <laughs> I am pretty grateful. I'm pretty grateful that I get to be here and live my best life and connect with all of you and meet all of the amazing people that I have here on the Brave Files podcast and my sister podcast, Was It Chance, with my buddy Alan Seals. And through my work as a success and leadership coach, it's just such a pleasure to be part of your brave journey with you. And I'm so incredibly grateful that you let me into your lives and into your homes just a little bit each week. Today, I am resharing a really special episode with you. This is the interview I did last year on my birthday with my amazing friend, Paige Chenault. She calls herself the chief birthday enthusiast, but she is the founder of an organization called the Birthday Party Project. The Birthday Party Project is an amazing organization that goes into homeless shelters all across the nation and throws birthday parties for children and their families. And while this may feel like a frivolous thing, it isn't because we know that joy changes lives. And when you listen to this interview with Paige, she's gonna share some incredible, heartwarming, beautiful, firsthand experiences with just how much the joy she has brought into these kids' lives can create change. It's absolutely incredible. In fact, I adore Paige and her story so much that she has a brave spotlight in my new book, Fuck Fearless, Making the Brave Leap. So be sure to check that out as well. And of course, it wouldn't be my birthday and my birthday celebration if we weren't giving back in some way. So I am urging all of you right now to put pause on this episode and go make a donation to the Birthday Party Project. Visit thebirthdaypartyproject.org. You can, if you'd like, put in the notes that you're making a donation in honor of my birthday, Heather from The Brave Files, but you don't have to. I'm not here for the credit. I just want to make sure this amazing organization gets every bit of love and support that they possibly can. Any amount that you have to give counts. Even as little as $5 can make a difference in the life of a child experiencing homelessness. Thanks so much for being here. Now let's listen to this wonderful episode with my amazing friend, Paige Chenault. This is Heather Vickery, and you're listening to The Brave Files, stories from people living courageously. When we choose bravely in big and small ways, it powerfully elevates our lives. I hope these stories connect with you and encourage you to embrace bravery in every possible way, day after day. Together, we can build a movement of courageous living that enriches both our lives and our communities. And if you enjoy the show, I ask you to please share it with others. Maybe think of someone who you want to choose bravely right alongside you. Thanks for tuning in. Now here's the show. Welcome, friends. This is Heather Vickery, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. I get the distinct honor of introducing you all to my friend, Paige Chenault. I ask Paige to be here today, well, because she's a super awesome person, you guys are going to love her, but also because I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate my birthday, which was this week, by introducing you to Paige and the Birthday Party Project. I have been waiting for this interview for months. Paige, welcome to the Brave Files. Thank you so much for having me, and happy birthday. Thank you so much. I love it. You're just one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. You know what, friend? I would have to say ditto. I love the opportunity that we had to connect early on and being able to see you flourish and thrive um, has been uh, such a privilege for me. So thank you so much for including me in this. Thank you. I could say ver verbatim the exact same thing for you. <laughs> um, I really could because I had the pleasure of, of seeing you years ago when you first started the Birthday Party Project, talk about the organization and what your hopes and dreams were for it. And you've just sort of blown it out of the water. So I, well, we're going to kind of work backwards here, but can you tell folks what the Birthday Party Project is? 
Yes, so the Birthday Party Project is a nonprofit organization. We partner with homeless shelters, transitional living facilities, and we throw birthday parties for the kids and the families that are staying there. So what that looks like is uh, people like us, um, birthday enthusiasts as we like to call them. <laughs> I love that. Come in and volunteer for a one hour birthday party where we literally host the biggest bash possible at a shelter or a transitional living facility where we celebrate all the kids that have birthdays that month. And every birthday kid gets a cake, they get presents, uh, there are games and activities for everyone that's staying at the agency to enjoy. Uh, we believe that that there is power in these celebrations. Yeah, I believe also. One of the things that I've learned from you and from my involvement with the Birthday Party Project that never occurred to me before is that many of these kids and even the adults um, haven't previously had or been to a, a birthday party. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, at our very first ever party back in 2012, um, there was an 11 year old boy, Micah, who came up to me afterwards and said, Miss Page, thank you so much. This is the first birthday party I have ever had. And as unique as that sounded in that moment, and for me, it, it really took me back because I I had never considered that there might be children that have never experienced a birthday party. That actually is is something that happens to us often, every single month actually, there are stories about children who have never experienced a birthday party or a birthday celebration of any kind. And that could be kids at ages three and those are kids at ages 17 and 18. And um, the moms and the dads that we get to celebrate with who are trying their very best to provide a better life for their families often tell us that it's because they have not had they have not had the means to do so or that they were never celebrated as kids. So they didn't recognize the yeah. importance of putting that, infusing that into their family's dynamics. It just gives me, it just gives me chills to, to think about that, especially, and you know, I come from a family where we celebrate everything. <laughs> um, I mean, everything. There's no occasion that doesn't get some sort of props and cheers and treats or whatnot. Uh, from the first day of school to report card day, you know, whatever it is. Can you share so maybe a story or two or, or just your perspective on how exactly being able to have an experience like this, to be in the room with um, joy and energy and cupcakes or – I don't know. Are you still doing bunt cakes? Those are delicious. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and presents and all of the kids there get something. Um, I've had the, the absolute privilege of taking my kids on a, on a number of occasions to work some birthday parties here in Chicago. And they love, you know, putting on the temporary tattoos or blowing up the balloons or giving out, you know, the trinkets or whatnot. How can you tell that this is impacting these children's lives and their parents? You know, um, a few things that I think are really magical about the way that we operate. And the first is, is that we do, we rely on the help of volunteers to host these parties. We cannot do it without them. And so we're bringing people from all different walks of life, all different socioeconomic backgrounds into these birthday parties. And, you know, the immediate impact is seen and felt when a kid walks in the room. Maybe he's, you know, his shoulders are kind of hung over and mm -hmm. he's, you know, looking at the floor. But by the time we celebrate his birthday, sometimes the sister, the sister or the brother's birthday, you know, they walk out of the room with their head held high and their shoulders back. It's as though, you know, we've taken this moment in time for them to experience normalcy, something that we take for granted um, and infuse a little bit of joy into their circumstances. But it really is that moment. It is, it is, it, it, at every single party, it's my favorite part, where we line up all the birthday kids and we call them by name. And then the room erupts in singing happy birthday. And whether there are people that are staying at that agency or it's our volunteers that are there, everybody is in this together. And those are the moments where the kids' eyes grow wide. And those are the moments where they then they close them tight and they make that wish, right? Mm. I don't ever want to take that moment for granted because, because we each get that moment 
moment once a year. It's one time a year, right? And and um, and I think it's so important that we allow kids to pause and to reflect or to just be really excited and silly yeah. and want to blow out that candle as fast as possible because they know it's for them and that moment was created for them. And so I would say that the opportunity to see it firsthand, immediate, happens at our parties. But what's really cool and what we hear often and and something that I've experienced recently, there's a longer lasting effect, right? We call these ripple effects that happen from these parties. The morale at the agency, you know, it increases. People are in a better mood. There are families that didn't, that are living literally next door to one another in these 10 by 10 rooms that might not have otherwise said hello to one another, but our parties are bringing a sense of community within the walls of these organizations as well. And I think that that's really profound so that people understand that they're not alone, even when they feel like they might be all alone. We've given them a chance to, to connect. So recently, I had the privilege of speaking to employees at Frito-Lay, and we were part of their town hall and had the opportunity to share about the birthday party project. And after that town hall meeting, a woman approached me, and I saw her coming out of the corner of my eye, and she's tall and beautiful. And she comes over, and she sticks out her hand, and it's shaking a little bit. And she says, Miss Page, my name is Francesca, and you celebrated my 14th birthday. Oh, while I was living at Interfaith Housing Coalition. And um, it took me by complete surprise. It was not a, a place that I expected to see somebody that we had celebrated. But also, I, don't, I, I rarely get the gift of four years later meeting a dynamic woman who is 18 years old the first, the youngest ever intern at Frito Lay. She's crushing the game, right? Wow. She is extraordinary in so many ways, and she remembers every detail of her birthday party. She remembers the grass skirts. She remembers the lays. She has the Polaroid pictures hanging on her memory board at her apartment now. And she said, "You also celebrated my sister's birthday." And my sister wants to be a veterinarian because you brought a petting zoo to her party and she had never seen live animals before. Oh, Paige. Wow. So for me, that was the greatest gift I could have ever been given, Heather, because you see every every month, 49 times a month, we see the immediate impact of our parties. But at this moment, we realize that like the ripple effects are there and they are profound for these individuals. And it was the greatest gift that I have ever been given with this organization. Francesca is thriving. She is a senior at Skyline High School in Dallas, Texas. It's a magnet program. People are asking her to, you know, to apply to their colleges because she is a standout student. And she found her voice as she was living in this shelter. And she she is reminded often that she is worthy and she points back to the birthday party project and making that happen. That is so special. Thank you so much for sharing that. I literally have tears. I have to compose myself for a minute. <laughs> um, what an incredible, th- I mean, I've, I've always known from the moment you opened your mouth to talk about the birthday party project that this was what was going to happen, but um, it is miraculous how the universe brings you back full circle to to see it and to motivate you. You, you go like five Energizer bunnies at once. I don't know how you do all the things you do. And my guess is, <laughs> my guess is even though your entire life is about celebration, that you rarely stop to celebrate yourself. And I, I hope that this gave you a moment to do that. Thank you. It actually, it did. And the proudest part for me was that my daughter was with me oh, in, I love at that. that time. And so she also got to see this unfold. And I thought, you know what? Eight years of really hard work and a lot of long hours and a lot of hours away from my family in yeah. the beginning of building this vision and this dream. And at that moment, it, it, it kind of culminated into like, Oh, it's so worth it. And it was such a reminder that I needed that it was so worth it. I love that so much. So I just want to let everyone know you're hearing a little background noise. Paige warned me in advance. Tell everybody what's happening there at at your offices. 
Yes, thanks everyone. Uh, so we have 45 middle school kids um, taking the day off of school, coming into our offices and volunteering with us at headquarters. And they are currently um, outside of this door <laughs> <laughs> preparing uh, for 49 parties across the country. They are filling favor bags. They are getting birthday cards written. They are wrapping presents. Um, and they are putting all of our boxes together for our January parties, actually. We're working that far in advance. And Love so it. we've got a really lively bunch out there. So thank you all for your patience as they are moving <laughs> back and forth in front of the door. <laughs> you know, I think it's great. And I love the opportunity to get younger people involved in what's happening. Um, you are in Dallas and that's, so that's what you're doing there. But wherever there is a birthday party project satellite, um, and we'll let you spout those off here in just a minute. Children, is it age six and above? are invited to go with a parent to volunteer, right? To be part of the, the birthday parties. Yes, that's correct. And, you know, I'm not one to follow all the rules. And so um, <laughs> I have been known to sneak in some toddlers to our parties for sure. But typically we think that, you know, about kindergarten age is a great time to expose your children and your family to what it means to give back. And we want to do it in a way that is fun so that kids get excited early on about the opportunities to live a generous life. And we hope that we're doing it in a way that allows them to also see that there are other ways to give besides a birthday party. That is so awesome. And I love that you just said to, to live a generous life. Yes. Yes. Sit with that, folks. This is this is your mission, right? I I love it. You know, Paige has been interviewed by a lot of people. She's been on major news shows and in magazines and in newspapers all across the world. You get to talk about the birthday party project a lot, but I would like to ask about you for a minute. Thanks. That's fun. <laughs> um, what is what is the biggest struggle for you personally? Uh, and we're we talk mostly about wonderful things, and the organization is wonderful. But in leading an organization like this and building it and helping it thrive, what's sort of the most difficult thing for you? <sighs> you know. Being in this leadership position requires me to learn and listen to a lot of voices. And so I think discernment is something that I work really hard on. It's, it's this idea of like, how are we, how will we um, continue to move our mission forward? How are we caring for people with tenacity? How are we, you know, using our compassionate side to make our mission grow? So, so I would say for me, the hardest thing is balancing this idea of, you know, kind of servant leadership and discernment with this other side that I have that's, you know, like, I, I consider myself a pretty brave individual um, and I like yes. to take I like to take risks and I like to try new things and sometimes I like to just uh, my husband will call it ready fire aim and <laughs> I love right? him <laughs> and so um, and so being able to to pause to slow down a little bit to ready aim fire to listen to those that I, I feel like are the right voices for us to hear to surround ourselves by the by the like the the good people, um, and to work through that discernment and those um, ideas and expectations uh, that others put on me, I think that's a really hard place to be. That's what I'm finding yeah. great challenge in currently. I could see that, uh, and you're the the face of the organization. We all, I mean, you and I are actually friends, but I think everybody feels like they're your friend. If they've met you once, they feel like they're your friend, and they have some sort of uh, right to to your time and your energy in an email or a text or in a whatever. And that's got to be a difficult position to be in. I mean, it's almost, you're going to laugh at me. I know you are, but it's really true. It's almost like there's a little bit of a celebrity element because you're the face of, of something that's making waves. I know. See, I knew you were going to laugh, but you know it's true. <laughs> I do know it. I I laugh because it's super uncomfortable, but you're right. I, it, it, it is true. And so, and, and something that's happened, you know, is that there has been a shift in our organization that um, I might be the chief storyteller and the chief birthday enthusiast, but we have an incredible team of eight that work on this every single day. And then we have 138 partners 
party coordinators. These are ambassadors of our mission around the country. And shifting the dialogue and the conversation away from Paige as the hero of the story yes. is something that we are being we are incredibly in intentional about because I I I I said yes to a calling. I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life, but it would not thrive the way that it has without all of these exceptional, yes. extraordinary human beings who are giving of themselves day in and day out, month in and month out. And so it takes a lot on my part too to be able to shift the conversation away from the same story that I could tell over and over again yeah. to understanding that there are hands and feet out here doing far greater work than I have done. Yeah. Or or equal. I'm not going to really allow you to downplay okay. the work okay. that you've done. Or equal. But, or equal. But sure. Building a team is the key to success in any business, whether you're a nonprofit organization or not. Yes. You can't do it all. You can't be it all. And while you may, I love that, the chief enthusiast, um, it, 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 there's no growth potential if it's all you. Oh gosh, yes. What we we stop if it's all me. I mean, yeah. candidly, my email box is overflowing, and <laughs> I I think that if we were waiting on an email from me, the world would have ended by now. You know, so um, for me, I I love to delegate. Um, I believe in it. I think it's important that we make mistakes and we learn from them. I will tell you that I I ask a lot of questions of our team because I like to understand the why behind something. Yeah. Um, I'm, it's not a, it's not coming from a critical place as much as it is about training us to make sure that the decisions that we're making on a daily basis have a why behind it. And so as we've grown our team, that's been something that we work very intentionally on so that the delegation can continue, so that I'm not the only one answering the questions, and so that we can bring in fresh perspective because yes. let's talk about it. Like, I don't have all the answers. And I don't want to. And so, yeah. um, but I have learned a lot about that over the years, that the, being the face of the organization, it, it comes with a price tag. And um, I will certainly disappoint people along the way. And I've, I've learned that that's okay. But it's okay to be able to say no. And it's okay to be able to give myself a break so that others can, can jump in and do what they're great at, oh. you know? Good for you. What a gift and a lesson for you to share with everybody. It's okay to say no. It's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to step back and let somebody else thrive. I know a lot of people, in fact, I have clients who are so afraid that if they help other people succeed, they're going to look less successful. And that's certainly not true. And and you really embody that by um, supporting others and lifting them up and giving them space to have a voice and to take ownership over what they're doing. Absolutely. And, you know, that does seem counterintuitive sometimes, right? Because you're like, wait, 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 how do I, wait, I'm stepping out of the limelight. How is this better for me? Um, but, but what we have learned is that even though all the Instagram posts you can find, Pinterest boards, whatever, will say the things about we rise by lifting others. You know, a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> tactically speaking, that's a really hard shift for people to make. And I understand ego gets in the way of a lot. <laughs> Sure. Um, right? And and I have ego. I struggle with that a, a lot. And the story becomes a bigger story, a grander story when we allow room for others to be involved. That's what I get excited about is that I can only tell, you know, I'm only one storyteller in this. But when I, when I step back or stand in line with the rest, then you have eight other voices yeah. that have incredible perspective and have learned so much that I get to the opportunity to then learn from them. I love that. I love it. How in the world, I have a, I have a sneaky suspicion, I know the answer to this, but I'm hoping I'm wrong. How do you care for yourself when you are constantly giving to others? And I mean, I listeners, I am telling you, this woman goes, you never, I don't know when you sleep. H how do you maintain a level of self-care that keeps you going? Mm -hmm. So I actually love sleep. It's my favorite thing. And um, <laughs> for years, so I, you know, I'm, I am, have been an entrepreneur in for-profit and non-profit because before the birthday party project, I had an event planning firm and it was, my name was on the billboard, right? So everything kind of hinged. And for years I worked until 
two o'clock, three o'clock, eight o'clock, you know, whatever it was. And I worked myself ragged and I don't want to be that version of myself and Good. I, I cannot. And so sleep became very important to me after I had my child and I just, you know, eight hours of sleep does a body really good. So I do sleep, Heather. I'm glad. I, I also get up in the morning and I start my day with gratitude. And I know that you have a Yay. gratitude journal. I and, do. Um, I, it's an extraordinary practice. And so I, I spend time in prayer and, and, I, and I read the Bible or I read a devotional or I journal and just talk about the things that it's 10 minutes and it's the most life-changing and life-giving 10 minutes of my day. And then I I work out because if I don't work out, then I'm going to be a crazy person to everybody around me. And so, (laughs) yeah, I I mean, you also do things like run, I don't know, triathlons, marathons, Ironman, crazy, crazy things. Yes. (laughs) It's the time that I have to spend in thought and in learning and, and it has helped me develop a discipline that I did not have before. And so training for an Ironman is there's a lot of accountability there and there's a lot of long hours being spent doing one thing. And, um, I needed that discipline. I needed to see that discipline equals results because I, at the core of who I am, I'm a creative, I'm, I'm on the borderline Enneagram three and seven. So, you know, I really (laughs) struggle. Um, uh, with it, with distractions and taking that. And so this discipline has really taught me about what it looks like uh, when you follow through with something. There's a lot of winning at the other end. Yeah, that's the grit you were talking about in yes. three words. That's it. Yeah, that's I it. love that. So you mentioned that you start your day with gratitude. And I, I was thinking just before we jumped on this interview, um, the newest, but I do have a, a gratitude journal out that is geared towards adults and it's called shift your focus and I love it. And I, I would love to give you a copy. Cause I don't actually think you have one. So I'm going to be at your big party in January. So excited. can I bring you one? I, you can, but I also will just go and buy them for everybody. <laughs> I know that's really, just say that page, go buy the book. Oh, well, I would love for that. But uh, what I, the newest book that I have, and it just came out on December 3rd is called grow grateful. And it's a gratitude journal for kids and families. And I wonder if there is, and I I don't know because I am a a smaller entrepreneur and and your organization really touches so many lives, but if there is some way for me, and if you think it would be valuable to partner with you all to give a copy of the kids book to some of the children you're celebrating, if it's a, uh, maybe I could, we could swing just for the birthday child or whatever, but do you think that it's something that the kids would enjoy doing and that they would build upon uh, it to have a gratitude journal. Here's what I have learned is that there are so many families that we celebrate with that are extremely grateful for what they have to the point where it makes me feel so, I mean, just it allows me to pause and to be reminded that I have so much to be thankful for on a daily basis. And I think this would be an exceptional thing for families to be able to do. It's a great way to grow um, together as a family, to yeah. connect. At, at my house, we do talk about the things that we are grateful for every day with Lizzie. What are you grateful for today? That's how we start our conversation um, around the dinner table. And so allowing families that have experienced trauma and crisis and transition and giving them a chance to pause and have a conversation around gratitude and what they're thankful for. They're already showing it and sharing it with us often. I think it would be a tremendous practice. And I think that would be, um, I, I would, I would love to be able to give that to some of our families. Awesome. Well, we will make that happen. Yeah, um, it's awesome. I would, I would be delighted to do so. And, uh, I'd love, you know, for you to, to do it with Lizzie, but write it down. And, and then what I've what I've discovered from my study of gratitude from a positive psychology standpoint is um, it's scientifically proven to increase our happiness and our overall well-being and decrease anxiety, stress, and depression. And teaching this skill to our children, to me, has the most profound effect on the potential of them as a group of adults. Yes, Yes, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think we're giving our kids more coping skills than ever before. And if we can start early by, you know, 
going back to this practice of discipline, you know, it takes a while for things to become a habit and allowing yes. them to be able to, to revert back, to, uh, to take a breath, to pause for a moment and practice those moments of, or those thoughts of gratitude when they are feeling the stress, the weight, the burden that kids are feeling these days. I think it changes everything. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. I don't know how well you will remember this, but a few years ago, we happened to be at the same conference. We, it was, we were at the Go Summit together, and you were speaking at that conference. Do you, re, do you remember that? I do. Um, it was fun to see you. It's always a nice opportunity to see you. You said something when you were speaking at that conference that I reference all the time. Uh, and it was a different kind of speech than I've heard you give you talk a lot again about the organization, but this wasn't that. I mean, you you mentioned the birthday party project, but you said to everyone in the room, the world needs you to live bigger. Mm, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that? Yep. Yep. Playing, so, uh, playing small does not serve the world. It's so true. And we do need to live bigger. <laughs> I do remember that. We say this a lot in my house as well. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. How did you interpret that? I would love to hear how how you felt about that statement because um, it takes on a different meaning for me almost every time I say it. Yeah, I can see that because wherever you are in the world, it's going to mean something different um, or in your in your life, in your business. Uh, I believe at the time and even still now, although I'm I'm scaling my business and shifting in some really exciting ways. So when I hear that today, I'm like, I just need to think bigger picture. I, I, I've been working on a referral-based business that's a, a boutique one-on-one -on -one coaching firm, and there's only so much growth because I only have so many hours in the day. Now I'm thinking I want to build it bigger so that I can touch more lives. But then when I heard you say it, and I still feel this now, it was simply um, step step out. Step out of, of your own window, your own viewpoint, and give the world whatever your unique gifts are because playing small, what is it that you say? Playing, playing sm small does not serve the world. Playing small does not serve the world. Imagine if we broadened our perspective. Imagine if our eyes became um, just... Uh, aware of what is around us on a daily basis. And and Heather, I'm talking about the simplest of, t of tasks of opening doors for others, of looking people in the eye, of asking not the first question of, hi, how are you? That's, that's simple, right? But maybe it's, how are you really? Or tell me about yeah. your day, yeah. or tell me about this. It's usually those next few layers of questions that, um, that lead to a greater conversation or bigger results or a, or a deeper understanding of one another. And so when we're talking about living bigger, it's like this idea that the world is so much larger than what we're thinking or feeling at the time. And yeah. I can be a very selfish human being. And um, I, I love the, the reminder to step outside of myself, to recognize the gifts that have been given in this world, not only to me, but to others. And then like, let's see what we can do with this, right? Like the dreaming big side of me never stops. And I have notebooks full and walls full of ideas and what ifs and yes ands. And I really love to kind of marinate on that and, and think about what could be versus what is, because that's where the challenge for me comes in. That's where I begin to stretch into something bigger. I love everything, every moment of everything you just said. I hope you all like go back and listen to it again, really out there. Go back and listen to it again and listen to it whenever you feel slowed or stopped or scared. It's so crucial. Oh, girlfriend, I love you. Um, the, you spend so much time helping others celebrate. And I know that you lead this really empowered team of folks who celebrate with you and, and you're great at honoring and celebrating their successes. How do you personally celebrate something that feels really good? Mm. So 
as silly as this sounds, celebrating me is is a bit uncomfortable. Whether it's birthdays, whatever it is, I'm not I'm, surprised. I'm just, yeah, I'm 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 very much I'm um, better at the outward facing celebrations of others than I am internally. But I have to say, when we hit some milestone moments, when I feel like I've accomplished something, um, and for me, accomplishing could be you know getting through some emails in a day. But um, there are a couple of that. things. That, yes, there are a couple of things that we like to do. So at my house, we celebrate with dance parties. Parties. So we turn Me Stevie too. Wonder. Yes, yes. Stevie Wonder goes loud on our on our radio. <laughs> we might pick up a maraca or something, and we just kind of shake it out. And um, the Chenault party of three, we like to have some dance parties. The other thing I do actually is I like to be alone in some of those moments of celebration. And so I sneak away to my favorite taco stand. I order my three tacos. I sit. And I eat my tacos by myself and I write down the things that made me proud of that accomplishment or um, of of reaching a goal. And I keep that with me because I don't want to, I don't want to lose that. I I want to be able to remember what got me to over those milestones. And that's um, magic, by the way. Magic. Yeah, the practice of that I think is so vital to continuing my like my personal growth, yeah. um, and it serves as a reminder in my darkest and deepest of times, in the times that I'm struggling to put the lights on, you know, just it, internally, to go back and say like, wow, okay, it's one step at a time, it's one foot in front of another, it is one email out at a time, it, it, you know, it's, it's slowing yes. down enough to listen and reminding myself that it can be done and can be accomplished. So that act of tacos and writing things down has become something that is very soothing for me and it's kind of this like personal moment of pausing and reflection that um, has been really, really helpful. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. That's one of the most beautiful ways of celebrating that we've ever heard on this show. Uh, And so thank you so much for sharing that with all of us. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. I hope some of you folks go out and try it. I am going to, I do a lot of reflection and I coach with people and help them do reflection, but I love this idea of quiet space. I I mean, who doesn't want a good taco, but whatever makes you feel (laughs) settled, right? Whatever makes you feel like you're in a safe enough environment to be honest with yourself and to reflect and use it to propel you forward. I think that's so beautiful. Well, I mean, and how often do we really allow ourselves to be completely vulnerable with ourselves? Right. Sometimes it's even easier to be vulnerable to others in a way that still masks some of that, you know? So just letting all the guards down, putting yourself in the most comfortable of positions to truly let your guard down, to talk about the great things that were, you know, the great successes that you have. And if you want to stop for that reflection, talk about the, the things that, you know, the good, better, how, of course, you know, I think that that's, I think that's a wonderful way to celebrate as well because we have to celebrate our failures. It's what leads us to the next big thing. I think that vulnerability part piece is very key. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. I get, I get to ask you questions so funny because people ask me what my favorite charitable organization is all the time. And, and the birthday party project is always at the top of my list. So I get to ask you what yours is outside, of course, of your own organization. What's your favorite charitable organization to support? Yep. So um, I believe that we have been given rights as human beings for, um, and, and there are things like food, water, shelter. Yeah, you that know, we, things that, that we, we have yeah. the right to. Yes, yeah. we do. We, we do. And so while there are a lot of causes that we support, for me, food banks are important. And so our family is very involved in our local food bank and the national, you know, No Kid Hungry is, is really, that for me hits home. I just, I, I see so many children at our parties that will stock up on their food oh, <laughs> because wow. they're not sure where their next meal will come from. They're, they're used to living this life of just scarcity. And so um, for me, it's it's really important that we find ways to to feed our, our families, to yeah. feed those that are hungry. I love that. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for that. Uh, they will be our charity of the week along with the Birthday Party Project. We'll have two out the, this coming week. And listeners, I urge you to get to know both organizations. Do what you can in your communities, in your homes, you know, if you have time, money, even if it's just some social media likes and shares, I urge you to um, get to know them and do do what you can to, to make us all stronger. We're better together. That's right. 
Yeah. Paige, will you share your three words with us one last time? Absolutely. It is joy and grit and compassion. Those are fantastic words, and they are perfect words for how I know you and who I know you to be. I love that. I think you struggled with them a little bit, but I think they're spot on. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love this. I've been waiting for a long time. Thank you so much for you making the time. You're the, the busiest woman I know and prioritizing it and sharing so much just wonderful gold with everybody on so many different levels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heather, I think that you are doing extraordinary work and the way that you care for people and the way that you want to inspire and empower and encourage people to live their best life um, is such a gift, not only to me, but to I know to your listeners um, and to your clients. So thank you for the privilege of being able to be a part of this and be along on your journey with you. Oh, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Listeners, Paige reminds us that joy really does change lives. We know it's true, and I hope you'll go out today and spread joy like it's confetti. And remember that the world needs you to live big, so be sure to put yourself out there. I'd love to know how you're spreading joy, choosing bravely, living big. Whatever it is you want to share with me, you can give me a call at 312-646-0205 and let us know. We, we always welcome feedback on the show. And uh, for those of you that don't remember or know, we have a Patreon page, which helps us raise funds to cover the expense of running this podcast. But one of the things we do on our Patreon page is that we, we tithe 10% of what we earn from our sponsors back to a different charitable organization every month. And this month's donation is going to go to the birthday party project. So if you want to be part of that family, if you want to be part of our big brave movement and grow with us, I urge you to go to patreon.com slash brave files, find a tier that works for you, join our movement today, help us support the birthday party project. And I just, I can't thank you enough for being part of my brave journey and my brave family. So this is Heather Vickery reminding you today and always to go out and choose bravely. Hey friends, I want to share something really exciting with you. We already know you enjoy listening to podcasts because you're listening to this one, but I'm also betting you enjoy audiobooks. And hey, listen, if you don't already enjoy audiobooks, then it's time to check them out. That's why I'm really excited to share Libro.fm with you. They are an incredible new platform for listening to audiobooks. And by choosing Libro.fm over other audiobook services, you are supporting a local bookstore of your choice and investing in your local community. Libro.fm offers over 150,000 audiobooks via their primary platform, which, by the way, they built with love and from scratch because they're a small business also. They even offer bookseller recommendations for great audiobook options. You can sign up right now via www.vickeryandco.com slash Libro.fm. That's vickeryandco.com slash L-I-B-R-O-F-M. And when you do, you'll get one free audiobook of your choice, and the proceeds will go to your favorite local bookstore. Now, check what I just said there. You're going to get a free book, and the proceeds are still going to go to your local bookstore because Libro.fm makes sure that their booksellers get paid even when they give a promo to customers. I've listened to over 20 audiobooks this year alone. I especially love listening to memoirs read by the author, and it feels great knowing that all of my purchases support my local bookstore, The Book Table, in Oak Park, Illinois. Libro.fm. The same audiobooks, the same price, but a completely different story. Check them out right now at vickeryandco.com slash Libro.fm. Have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Maybe you've had this thought and then quickly shut it down because who has the time? Or you don't know how, or gosh, it just all seems too hard. If you have something to share with the world, we want to encourage you to get your message out. The world needs to hear it. Did you know that 50% of all homes are podcast fans? 
If you've ever wondered about having your own podcast or how it can increase your business or get your message across, then please join me and the other experts from the Podcast Power Academy for our monthly free Q&A session. It's called, So You Want to Start a Podcast? This casual live conversation will help you understand how podcasting can be a great decision, why now is the best time to get started, and how to get into action with it. Visit podcastpoweracademy.com to learn more. You've been listening to The Brave Files, stories of people living courageously. To learn more about the show, find our show notes and full episode transcripts, or to get some great bonus content, visit thebravefilespodcast.com. And we would love to know what you think of the show. You can give us a call at 312-646-0205. Let us know your thoughts on the episode, the show in general, or maybe share with us how you're out choosing bravely. This episode is brought to you by Vickery and Co. Success Coaching. Coaching that helps you maintain a life well-lived and a business well-run. Learn more at vickeryandco.com. Our music was created and produced in a custom collaboration with Matt Lewis from ML Creative Consulting, a boutique firm dedicated to helping clients identify their unique sound and amplify their brand with custom delivered soundtracks. We couldn't do any of this without our extraordinary audio engineer, Andrew Olson. Learn more about him and check out his work at findandrewolson.com. And special thanks to everyone on Team Brave from our producers, associate producers, copy editors, writers, and support team. Special thanks to Molly, Mary, Kim, Sabra, and Sabrina. I'm your host and executive producer, Heather Vickery. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week.